Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Georgi, and today we are looking at good Soviet radio. This radio made in 1975 at the height of Soviet influence around the world. This radio made by good hardworking citizens in Latvia, Latvia, in Riga, in the factory that make very good radios for all of Soviet Union. This radio, it is beautiful, it is nice, and it does not have frequency for influence of Western pop music to corrupt our good hard-working Soviet worker who make things very beautiful. As you can see, this thing is very good. Let me show you. This radio has had hard life. It has probably been in Siberia. On the back, the instructions. Very simple. What I can do. Very simple for people to understand. Even Soviet peasant working in field can operate radio. Let me get screwdriver and we open the back and see just how good this radio is built. Oh dear, I can see problem. This radio has been living in Siberian swamp, but still, I think it is very good radio. Let me check. We shall take the back off. Let us undo screws to make back expose. Even after lots of years, if you can believe, 45 years, this radio the screws are still come out. Let us examine the inside of such beautiful Soviet workmanship. As you can see, it is modern printed circuit board, modern rusty battery terminal. We have tuning capacitor and we have turret. Turret from Soviet T-34 tank. This will do very good. This will make good radio work forever. Let us try with power supply and we shall see what this radio should be do. Cool, blimey, love a duck, governor. I can't keep that up all day, can I? Blimey, me, rushing? I'm never rushing anywhere. And I bought this one from eBay, direct from Latvia, and as uh, Comrade Georgi explained, it was made around about 1975. It is a... Typical Russian multi-band radio. I'm going to turn it over again before we do anything else. The VF202. And if I remember rightly, that stands for Vlast Electronic Technica Fabricat. It has multiple wave bands. It has long and medium wave. And as you can see here, we have in meters the wavelength. So you, you have, at the moment, it's on long wave. It is turret controlled for medium wave, and then you go right into the short wave bands, and you have one, two, three, four, five. And then there's blank, which I don't quite know what's for, and then we're back to long wave. Now, yes, as you can see, there is corrosion, there is dead insects, rust and salt and all sorts but generally it looks complete on the back you can see that you've got an external aerial socket which looks like it's a little bit damaged you have a loudspeaker jack which is on a three and a half mil terminal and you have nine volts in and it says anywhere between 14 and 80 milliamps which is not a lot of current to be quite honest especially for a, a big old bus like this shall we say so nine volts the top one is positive the bottom one is negative okay so to connect those up and let's turn it on using the front panel control Garincha was behind the wheel, driving back to his home in Palbrande to see his children. He'd been drinking. 
And it works. It looks like the dial lamp isn't working. The tone control is working. Medium wave working. Okay, so we're not hearing anything on short wave, but medium wave and long wave are working fine. And if I turn the radio on, I'm showing that it's using about 10 milliamps with no sound. Still only about 20 milliamps. So for a radio that's 45 years old, she ain't doing bad. Okay. So what do I have to do to this? Well, in theory, nothing, because it's working. But the reality is we have some very rusty battery contacts. We have dirt on the turrets here, and this is just a matter of cleaning this off with a fiberglass pencil. Oh, looking from under here, there looks to be some corrosion on the circuit board. So let's dig in and see if we can lift the circuit board out. One more, just this corner. And what else is there? Is that it? That's all that's holding the board by the looks of it. And as you can see, we do have some corrosion going on here and here. But everything else looks fairly original. Generally, it looks like the whole thing can come apart fairly easily. It looks like the frame is internal and you can take everything apart as a whole unit and leave just the casing as a separate item. So I think I'm going to try and do that. That's got a grub screw on it, so obviously there's a lot of force on that. Well, there's two on it actually, which is uh, interesting, because obviously only one was tightened up, so we'll sort that out. And if I look down some of the screws appear to be missing but it's held in by anything with a white screw head so these are painted white let's undo that one all right the aerial is holding it in how do we get the aerial off does the top unscrew yes it does so that pushes down below the frame like that and then the whole radio comes out in one piece and there seems to be a lot of crusty screws and bits and pieces that's a broken off terminal which is this corner here so I'll have to glue that back in in fact, that screws from the inside of that. So what have we got left with once we take the, the dirty plastic case away? Well, we have a dirty front radio by the looks of it, a dirty sort of radio by the looks of it. Um, there is, as I say, rust on the battery terminals here. This is a switch, which is the light switch, which 
needs to be sorted out for that. There's dirt here. The dial cord itself looks pretty good. Could do with a little bit of lubrication, but um, no problem at all. We actually have two dial lamps. I wonder if it's just a matter of this switch being corroded that's stopping the dial lamp come on. And uh, yeah, that's and obviously a terminal clean, so I shall uh, move all these bits and pieces out the way. And I think we're going to start with a a bit of a spruce up and see if we can get let's see if we can get the dial lights working as a first thing before we start taking circuit boards out and let's bring the power supply leads back again. Yeah, so um, let's have a look at the switch, see if we can get the switch to work. We've got the radio on, even though nothing is screwed together. So firing up the lights is firing up the lights is 60 milliamps of current draw. Again, to be expected, these are standard tungsten bulbs. The only way you could reduce that is if you change them to LEDs. And seeing as this radio is fairly original, I'm I'm not inclined to do that. Now normally I would. Normally I'd be very keen to just go in there, bright LEDs. Oh, knocked off the negative terminal. Yeah, you know, bright LEDs and just yeah hammer it and make it all super duper but um in this case i'm not actually keen to do that because it's it's original and i don't think it needs it i think it just needs a bit of a tidy up getting this oxide crud off this uh, can down the bottom here and cleaning all this oxide out would be a little job which uh, not too bad. Cleaning off the turrets, that's another job which we've got to do. But the reality is, this is a very straightforward little radio. Cleaning the rust off of this terminal has to be done as well. I think we're not going to have a problem. But yeah, it looks like it's just a case of cleaning things up. This is, this is working. I'm not going to change anything. I don't think anything needs really changing. Maybe change these Russian electrolytics. I don't know yet. I don't think there's any real need to do any major work, Just uh, it's just a clean-up job, this radio. We know the radio works mostly. We know we've got a lot of cleaning to do, a lot of decorrosioning. Do I start with the cosmetics and do I start with that? The, the cabinet just needs a good shovel in water. Um, there are scratches, a, an obligatory cigarette burn in the front glass there but really there's there's not a lot that needs major repair work on here it just needs all the rust and muck taking out of it uh, the the grill although it has dirt and other stuff on it I don't think again I don't think I'm gonna do much to that bar clean it up that looks like a spill of a drink or something so um, I think this will just benefit from a good washing. The chassis, I think I'm going to remove the battery contacts to de-rust those. And I'm not sure if that comes out as a separate box or whether I can take the contacts out directly. Taking off this board may just require unsoldering one, two, three, four six seven connections there and then i can hinge it out sideways and that might give me better access to the fingers on the turret which will be a, a good thing those battery connectors are plastic welded in but they also have extra capacity to be removed and re-welded there are extra extra stalks for repair of the battery terminals so yeah, I think I'm going to be able to do that with no problem. This I could just drop into a a cleaning solution and 
I think I'm going to do something special for the cleaning of this and that will cover in possibly the next video. We'll get on with stripping this down into bits and you'll see it open and naked and ready for some work. I will thank you for coming to this video. If you like this video, press the like button. If you want to, please do the subscribe and also hit the bell button. The bell button will tell you when the next video in the series about Soviet radio. Good Soviet workers make good Soviet radio. Thank you very much. You will be here next time. Or I will have you sent to Siberia. In Gulag. With no radio. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Meh. Meh. What I can do. Should I have worn the hat for that bit?